All right, welcome back to Flock of Socks, the podcast, episode 158. Today on the show, Romeo and Juliet is getting a remake that no one asked for. Then we got some Toy Story twerking and girls getting sucker punched by repeat offenders in Urban Decay. In Cringe of the Week, we need to abolish the nuclear family. We'll explain why. And last but not least, oh, some of you guys got mad because there wasn't a Friday show. You call me a grifter because I got the flu on Easter weekend. Well, if you like the show so much, maybe you should have joined Bonusland. Oh, you don't like the show and it's not worth joining Bonusland? Then why are you complaining? Oh, you do like the show, but you can't uh, join Bonusland because it costs too much money? Well, maybe you shouldn't be watching podcasts all day. All this and more, it's Fluggest Talks, the podcast, episode 158. Rank the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's Fluggest Talks, the podcast, featuring Richard Rappel. All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, if you're like me, you're constantly looking for ways to trick your brain into breaking your bad habits. And I'm here today to tell you that I found a product that does just that. I'm not talking about seeing a hypnotist or taking pills or going to talk to a doctor. I'm talking about our sponsor, Fume. Fume helps you redirect your actions from bad habits to just habits so you can accomplish your goals without drastic, unsustainable changes. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habits easy. Fume tastes great and is fun to fidget with. Start with a new good habit by going to tryfume.com slash Fleckus and pick up their journey pack today. That's tryfume.com, T-R-Y-F-U-M.com slash Fleckus. The code Fleckus will give you 10% off at checkout. Tryfume.com slash Fleckus is the site. Link is below. Thank you guys for watching. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Fume for sponsoring. Yeah. Thank you, Fume. It's always good to get rid of your bad habits. I agree. Especially if you have the bad habit of leaving mean comments when I get sick one time in 150 something episodes and I say, hey, no episode today. I got sick. I have the flu and it's Easter weekend. But then I get called a fat grifter. <laughs> Maybe you need some fume for your problems. Yeah. Yeah, if, you, if that was you, I forgive you. Oh, interesting. High interesting road. Take. I'm taking the high road. No, I don't think you took the high road. <laughs> I don't think that was the high road. Hey, if that was you, I forgive you. You like the show a lot. Clearly, I'm on your mind. It made you cry on Friday. Apologize and continue watching. If you don't want to apologize, you're not allowed to watch the show ever again. I like to take it as a compliment that so many people were mad that the podcast wasn't available to them. That's how much they like it. So that's my opinion on the whole matter. I love the audience. Me too. And uh, they love the show. So Yeah, I love the audience. The audience loves the show. But then people... They they, they 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 take too much. Mm. Oh, it's everything's for free. He needs to be there every Tuesday and Friday. Or get else in the chair, you fat fuck. Get in the chair, you fat fuck. It's so easy. All you do is sit in the chair. Do you think these notes get written themselves on computer paper and stacked up this high across 156 episodes? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I have the box to prove it. All right, all right. We're yapping too much. We're yapping too I much. I told Fleckus not to do this. I said, take the high road. Don't don't challenge anyone. It's <laughs> he good. said, take the I high said, road. Take the high road. And I was like, oh, I'm going to address this before the show even <laughs> starts. I'm going I'm to divert the intro yeah. and go on a tangent and attack every. Oh, there's so many negative comments from such a positive audience, such a positive channel. And everyone gets mad. Oh, I'm a grifter. I'm a grifter. Because I got sick. Yeah, if you watch the bonus land episode, Fleckus was like at fifty percent, and it was, I had the flu. And it was mostly like me yapping, and we did like a four, uh, what what do you call it? Seventy percent of an episode. Yeah, so. and that episode that was unlisted on bonus land is now able for you to be watched. Anyone who missed it on Friday and doesn't want to buy bonus land, you can watch it. It's linked in the description. Wow, so didn't know you were going to do that. Yeah, there you go. Nice guy. You're sick. You're, you're, <laughs> nice guy. You're a grifter. Yeah, I missed one episode because I'm sick. 
I'm ready to fight. Yeah. All right, let's get into the show. We have a great housekeeping. Uh, we have four pages of housekeeping, and we're light in the migrant section, too, which is good. We've been doing too much migrant stuff lately. Yeah. I, 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 hey, I always say this. I mean, this show was kind of modeled after This Week in Culture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is urban decay, gay stuff for kids, woke, cringe, stuff like that. Uplifting. H- uplifting gold, housekeeping, which politics. is, you know, mostly politics. And there's a rotating thing every th- every season and it was covid for a while and now it's illegal immigrants it's covid ukraine blm yeah. yeah there's a thing going on every time and uh, the migrants is kind of the most important one yeah. covid covid was also equally important but you yeah know. let's get into the show right. we have a great show today we had a great show last week we had a great bonus land for those who subscribed thank you to those who subscribed made a huge difference we got a bunch of new subscribers happy to have you guys we love you you make the show go around you don't complain <laughs> You keep it 100. You keep the lights on. Everyone else is a little rat complainer. Oh, all right. All right. Where's my show? Calm down. Calm down. Where's the show? I want to watch during work. (laughs) This is a this is the wrong angle for you to keep going on this. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah, That's correct. We're going to stop right there before we take it too far. All right. I hope everyone had a nice Easter. Uh, A lot of our enemies tried to do the best to ruin our holiday that celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yep. Uh, luckily, Google had a nice little front page image for us. Thank you, Google. Thank you, Google. Here it is. Just a blue <laughs> URL, nothing. Happy Easter in Arial font. <laughs> Arial 10. Yeah, not bold. Not even not bold. Not even bold. You know what they do for all the other holidays? They make the thing go crazy. Oh, it's like a whole animation. You could play a game for the first black abortion that, you know... Yeah, she crossed state lines to get it, and there's a whole big animation of her from Missouri to Minnesota. Yep, that's yeah. what they do for that. Everyone else doesn't get much. Uh, Joe Biden, he did his best to ruin the holiday too. He actually did do some uh, good Christian things. Here's his uh, introducing the Easter Bunny. Thanks, everybody. And by the way, say hello to Oyster Bunnies. Come on up, Bunny. <laughs> get up there, so they can see you. <laughs> Say hello to the oyster bunnies. Hey, he's close. <laughs> he's certainly close. The oyster bunnies. And then he on his uh, on his Instagram, he posted about happy trans day of visibility, mm-hmm. um, which was happened to fall on Easter this year. Yep. And it's weird because can you read what it says about the, the, the statement from the president, the trans day of visibility? Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. Transgender Day of Visibility. Guys, we have no problem seeing you. Spot you a mile away. You kind of stinky. Some of you are stinky. You have huge shoulders and hands. You're right there. You're yeah. the guy in the dress. I'll know. I'll show you what's visible. The Adam's <laughs> yeah. apple right there. Yeah, we have no problem uh, visibling you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then so Joe Biden, it says, I, Joe Biden, the president, yeah. like completely, you know, most statement on behalf of Joe Biden. Literally, yeah. He tweeted it. Uh, he did everything. He signed it. And then the day after. Someone asked him about a it. A reporter yeah. asked him. And Joe Biden says, I didn't do that. Biden said when asked about proclaiming Easter Sunday as Trans Day of Visibility. Asked about Speaker Johnson's claim. Otherwise, the president replied, he's thoroughly uninformed. Mm, and yeah. Joe, so I don't think he's the one who's uninformed. I think you don't read your own Twitter or write your own press releases or know generally where you are. But you know what the Oyster Bunny is. <laughs> yeah, you do know what the Oyster Bunny is. So that's close. You got close. <laughs> you can't get too mad at him. He knows Oyster Bunny. I know. Uh, but yeah, he clearly doesn't know what his handlers are posting on his behalf. Mm-hmm. And they clearly don't need to tell him to keep him up to speed because they don't even, it doesn't even stick. Yeah, it's like a human puppet, but you don't even have to do any. You don't have to shove your hand up there. You just kind of like take his likeness and do all the online yeah. stuff. The puppet said, Yeah, the ex- puppet told me to tell you guys. Hi, Joseph R. <laughs> puppet Man. <laughs> and then they just type whatever they want. They type whatever they want. Um, well, it is Trans Day of Visibility uh, mm-hmm. on Easter this year. Uh, and then here's the person who invented Trans Day of Indiv- uh, Visibility. There he yeah, is. There he is. Doesn't look like uh, an Easter celebrator. No, <laughs> certainly not. <laughs> certainly not. Oh, henchman, man. henchman maxing a little bit, yeah, but uh, pengu- pe- more penguin maxing than hang- yeah, henchman. More Oswald Cobblepot. Yeah. So uh, ugly, decrepit freak, and you know that's who's pushing it. So there was a lot of online pushback against Trans Day of Visibility. Matt Walsh had a reply to a tweet 
that kind of summed it up pretty good. Can you read the first four? Yeah, trans-identified people have accomplished nothing of significance. Non-binary and two-spirit are nonsense labels that mean nothing. So is trans, of course. You cannot tell us that trans people will kill themselves if you misgender them and then in the next breath insist that these people epitomize resilience and joy. And the only way to double down on our commitment to their well-being is to tell them the truth and stop catering to their delusions. So Wow. Real stable bunch. That's the best point in there, and it's the point we've made before, too. Mm -hmm. It's trans people are so resilient and strong, but if you mislabel them or call them the wrong thing, they'll off themselves. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm close. To and then it. it makes you wonder. It's like trans people who think that you and I are racist, irredeemable, homophobe, transphobe, xenophobe, anti-Semites or whatever. Uh, they care what we think. Yeah. Because if we think they're still a man, then they're going to off themselves. They write us off, but then get pissed in the same sentence, right? Yeah. We're irredeemably horrible, irredeemably racist and transphobic. But if you think I'm not a girl, I'll kill myself. Yeah. And one of the things that I think makes the trans people like that uh, anxious with us and that sort of disconnect where they think, oh, those guys are irredeemable. Those guys are trash. And then that 10% in the back of their mind being like, but does everybody think that? Yeah, but does yeah, everybody yeah. who's normal think that? And then so they want to repress that as much as possible. Yeah. Um, Frank, my friend Frank from Quite Frankly Show, highly recommend. Uh, I'll link it in the description as well. I just did a show with them a couple weeks ago yeah. on Friday night. Uh, he had a great tweet that sums up kind of like, you just give it a read. I can't describe it. Easter interferes with the animal's long uninterrupted string of winter slash spring award show holidays and is an unwelcome speed bump on the road to self-worship sex holiday months. It's exactly what you'd expect a fungal breakaway nation to do. Create an inverse to every fundamental aspect of the host until the host disappears. It's essentially the zombie ant fungus, but for a country. Yeah. You do the opposite of what the host does until the host disappears, and then you have an entire country and culture built only on the basis of opposite of what, what was done before. Yeah, inverse truth, inverse yeah. uh, righteousness, right? And then when the country was founded on Christian values, like America was, then you get an antichrist country. Yeah, and we've talked about it before, uh, speaking of like the timeline of it, where Easter is at the end of March. Um, I've, some people have been tweeting about it, and we used to, we did it on the show ourselves, but talking about how many different gay holidays and days oh, yeah. and months there are. And I think somebody calculated it, and there are 155 out of 365 days in a year that are somehow some sort of twink celebration. Yeah, we need more visibility. We need more. We need a power bottom week. We <laughs> need, you know, all uh, that shit. Disgusting. So. All right, let's move on. Uh, the Baltimore Bridge obviously fell down. Yeah. Uh, now it's going to take 10 years to build back. Yeah, that's the headline. It says Baltimore Bridge rebuild could take up to 10 years. And then if we remember, maybe not everyone does, if you're not 100 and something years old. I was not alive myself. But they built the Empire State Building in, in the 30s. And how long does it say? One year for that, approximately they one year. built it in a year. The Hoover Dam got built in five years, which is obviously a lot bigger than that bridge. Um, Golden Gate Bridge is something similar. So mm -hmm. a lot of feats of strength when American were American workers were just illiterate Irish alcoholics and various ethnicities with no safety harnesses, no harnesses, no insurance payouts, nothing. Um, and the thing that kind of gets me is like the Baltimore Bridge is going to take ten years, and it's like, do we have a turbo speed? There's no turbo mode. We don't have anything where it's like, okay, no, but we really need this one. This one yeah. can't take 10 years. We have to, we, yeah, this one can't take 10 years. The other ones will take 10 years because we're focusing on this one. Yeah, exactly. And like, isn't the, aren't the pillars, the foundational supports in the water already? Didn't one get hit? That's what I would think. I would assume. You can't just run some track across, hang some wires. Get a couple guys in there. No, you need an HR safety woman wearing a vest <laughs> yeah. at the work site. I don't know. Doing what? Counting pennies yeah, or something. Exactly. You need some HR lady there to make sure everyone gets their break. But then again, it's Baltimore. I don't really care. You know, whatever. Live in your own filth and squalor, right? Like the yes. same as the fentanyl addicts on the streets of San Francisco mm -hmm. or Portland. Enjoy. That's the bed you made, right? This is the bed you made. Something bad happens. This is how it gets resolved. Yep. All right, moving on. The eclipse. This is just a quick uh, referendum. Mm. Addendum. 
Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. One of them. You've been talking about the eclipse for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked about this on uh, the Bonus Land episode on Friday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't start out. I'm not going to get back Don't into the out. bad comments. Don't start I out. couldn't believe the amount of negative comments. I actually didn't even read them. I didn't, I didn't read any. I just kept getting told, oh, everyone's mad. Oh, your audience seems mad. I didn't read one of the comments. I was sick and I had the flu. That's what happens. <sighs> okay. <laughs> So we've been talking a lot about the eclipse, right? And then the military is doing drills simultaneously when, with the eclipse happening. And they might be martial law drills, but who knows what's going on. And then the time traveler from last episode, mm -hmm. he said that today. Big John is, yeah. Today, Tuesday, Big John. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. If, uh, if Big John, the earthquake happens today. That time, come to me and I'll gatekeep that time traveler. Okay, smart. Uh, and then also the military is doing drills during um, the eclipse. Mm -hmm. I told this to bonus land people. We're going to be doing our own drills too. Uh, my drill I'm doing is having two months of food in the freezer and having a month of water good to go in the house that we can just reserve in case we need it as a drill. Do we even have a month of water? We get well, the ice bath. The oh, the disgusting ice bath? We can drink that. Okay, there you go. All right, so you're not even following your own eclipse advice. So if we run out of water, we won't drink out of the sink. We'll just take cups and we'll scoop it out of the ice bath I use. Great, a hair. Mm. <laughs> disgusting. Greasy Pig. ice bath water. Pig ice bath All water. All right, let's move on to some news. Romeo and Juliet is yeah. getting redone. So the original Romeo and Juliet that I saw was Leonardo DiCaprio and that nice cute girl. I was like 13 when I saw it, and I, I, I kind of teared up at the end. The one where they have all the guns, and yeah, John Linguizamo's yeah. in it. John Linguizamo. <laughs> that one was a little weird, too. I <laughs> mean, hey, Romeo and Juliet, it's a classic. It's going to get remade a thousand times before our lives are over over uh, TV, film, theater, whatever. So yep. it's okay to remake Romeo and Juliet. And at the end, not only a spoiler, but Romeo... Offs himself. He unalives himself. I, th I think we could spoil a, fifth, a 1400 uh, Shakespeare play. I think yeah. we could spoil so it. So he unalives himself, and then this is who he unalives himself for. There she At is. At the end, he believes her to be dead, and then he unalives himself as a response. I get it. That's Juliet. I'd kill myself, too, if she was dead. <laughs> I'd drink the poison. i drink the poison as well. Yeah, if I couldn't be with her, man, I'd I'd die. So when this gets no views, mm -hmm. it's it's a theater performance in London, right? And Tom Holland is the co-star. I don't know if we said that. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's Romeo. When this gets no views or no one cares or doesn't get the accolades that people think it deserves, yeah, it's because we're racist. Yeah, it's be, they're setting you up because you're racist. You didn't think that this ugly, mm, I, I don't want to be rude, but this not worth killing yourself over lady was, you know, if, if you don't think she was worth it, then you're kind of a bigot. And yeah, and the overarching theme we see with progressives and the progressive agenda is we said we said this a week ago. Uh, it's like a George Orwell quote, like "Don't believe your eyes and ears." Mm -hmm. That's like the last most important rule. Yeah, like when you start gathering evidence and seeing data, and you see the city crime and the criminals getting let out and the borders flooded. And the last rule is ignore what you're seeing and hearing with your eyes and ears. And then that's when they know they have you. And that's when they know they have you. And that's what it is for culture, too. It's like, yeah. oh, here's our new art. This is Romeo and Juliet. This is good. Yeah. Ignore your eyes and ears when you know it's just, like, not good. Yeah. And no, you no, ignore that part. It's good, right? Because there's a black person and a white person. And it used to be a white person and a white person. Now the whole cast is, like, 60% black. Like, that's good. That, yeah. And it's like, well, what's the, let's see the play. Let's see the actual content. And I mean, to be honest, the casting director or whoever decided this just threw this young lady into a buzzsaw. Yeah. You know, that's another angle of it. Like, I bet she was even surprised she got the part. Yeah. Like, what? Whenever <laughs> I'm starring in Romeo and Juliet with Tom Holland and I'm Juliet. There might be a, uh, a a bad casting director's angle here where it's like, oh, we'll cast her and then we'll get a ton of hate. And they then sit like back. A third, thirty percent of the viewership will be like hate watchers, and then there'll be more views, and we'll get a lot of social media engagement when everyone's talking about it. Yeah, I don't quite understand it, but they definitely put her into a buzzsaw of the internet, and I was part of that today, actually. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's go to speaking of dystopian, unrecognizable futures. The VR work future thing. There's two clips here. One is this guy working uh, in Toronto. He gets paid $3.75 an hour, and he's, like, controlling a robot from his house. Isn't that kind of spooky? 
we gotta get rid of that sound. Are you sure that's real? No. Okay. No, <laughs> no. Right. But that's what's coming. Okay, okay. I, I doubt that, the, uh, for some reason, I doubt this. I don't know. All right. All right. There's different, there's different takes. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's what's coming. This then, next one I know is real, though. And it's kind of the same thing, but just a little less hands on. Yeah. Just give me a moment. Just some Indian guy on an yes. iPad? Yes. And two people in the same room. What? Two people in the same room. Yes, yes, yes. All right, All you right. get it. So the, the check-in at a hotel is a guy in India. Yeah, on an iPad. And I think Bank of America has something similar in that. And I, more and more companies are obviously going to be taking that cheap, that yeah. cheap, cheap labor. So enjoy. This is the future that they want. They want you to work from your pods and your Google glasses and you make $3 an hour, which is enough to pay for your pod. Just and, enough to stay in the pod. Yeah. And then they keep you in the pod and you kind of merge with AI. Yeah, I don't know. The the future, I, I was sold a future that was full of new tech and brilliant advances that would save time, money, and create efficiencies. And instead, we're just finding new ways to exploit third worlders. <laughs> you know, we're just finding faster and better ways to exploit third worlders. That's a so good point. I don't know. That's a very good point. All right, well, let's move on. Uh, this next section is an animal section. And I want to use this section to extrapolate the lessons we learn from these animals and the situation they're in. Okay. And I want to extrapolate and take away a bigger picture lesson. So let's play this one first. This is the lizard and the praying mantis. Lizard goes for it with the tongue. Mantis attacks. So the lizard, yeah, the lizard tries to... Oh, a mantis is strong, and he's immediately eating the lizard's face. And holding his mouth open. Wow. And then the lizard kind of pushes him back. But before you know it, overpowered by the praying mantis and the lizard is dead and being eaten. Wow. Disgusting. Yeah. So at the end, the mantis bites the thing's head off and eats it. Mm -hmm. What can we learn from this? Sometimes you got to strike first. Whoever strikes first and fastest wins. Mm, but the lizard struck first there. Mm, okay, all right. Tell me then. Tell me. What's the lesson? I was just going to say I didn't know a mantis could eat a lizard. Okay. That was pretty obvious. I see where this section is going. <laughs> I thought it was pretty I obvious. I see where this brain dead section is going. All right. All right, next clip. Okay. Maggie. Maggie. Cat. Maggie, what are you doing? Looking in the toaster. There's nothing in the toaster. Nothing There's nothing in down it. in there. I checked. Maggie. Got a mouse. <gasps> Fuck! <laughs> well, and then at the end, there was a mouse. What can we learn from that? Cat goes in the toaster. No. I was going to say it's good to trust your gut because sometimes you can seek and get an opportunity in an unlikely situation and get a reward for it. Okay. I see what you've done. <laughs> I see what you've done to me. Good. All right. We're on our nice last work. page of housekeeping. Make sure you guys tickle the post. Leave the opportunity. What is it? Tickle the post. Uh, Use the opportunity once. to tickle the post. Leave a comment, like the video, leave a comment again, then start yapping. Positive comments, positive feedback only. <laughs> uh, reminder of that rule. Send stuff to the P.O. Box, notifications need to be on, all that good stuff. And if you see someone talking shit in the comments, well, let's start defending the boys. You know? I'm not even saying anything. I'm taking the high road. I'm just doing a show. Me too. We're both taking the high road this week. If you guys have your opinions on how the show runs, that's your opinion. <laughs> And it's free speech. You're you're free to have it. Yep. All right. Ben Shapiro and Candace, speaking of free speech, fair to have it. This is obviously an old story, and it's been developing over time. I did find this old clip of, uh, or this old post from Ben Shapiro. Hey, Candace Owens, I'm liking the new billboard here in Nashville. That's when our show first started, and it's uncancelable since 1989. She got canceled. She got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> uncancelable as long as you don't get mad at Israel. Uncancelable. <laughs> Uncancelable since 2024, round two. Now yeah. it's like the clock starts over. It's like no workplace accidents since. Eh. Yeah, the clock has started over. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, people are talking about why Candace was fired, and it's because she had unpopular opinions at Daily Wire mm -hmm. about Israel. And they're and not. I, I heard there was like a big meeting after Candace got fired, an impromptu Daily Wire I heard meeting in her studio. Yeah, some, kind of like a scalp situation. Kind of a scalp holding the scalp up. The natives go, ah! 
They go, this is what happens if you don't agree with our Israel shit. Yeah, so... Your studio uh, gets taken over for the meeting when you leave. But it was a little bit of, like, panic, justifying why we did it, that sort of thing. I don't know for... I, I wasn't there, obviously, firsthand knowledge, but uh, a little bit of damage control is what it sounds like. Yeah, a little bit of damage control. They made everyone leave their phones because they don't know who they can trust or not trust from the inside. Do we have inside people there? Maybe... Uh, but then, you know, so that was the whole thing. Candace gets fired because she criticizes Israel and had like a whole fight with Rabbi Shmuley, who's one of the worst people I've ever seen. Uh, or horrible, guy. horrible guy. Horrible guy. Um, so they had a huge fight and then she gets fired. And then I found these old Ben Shapiro tweets. Someone posted this the side by side. Said when it's America, Ben Shapiro goes, I think the owners of Ben and Jerry's are awful, awful politically, but they make a great ice cream. So I eat there because I'm not a vindictive a-hole. Oh. And then when it's Israel... Uh, ben and Jerry says, uh, we will end sales of our ice cream in the occupied Palestinian territory. Read our full statement. And then Ben Shapiro goes, oh, well, guess I won't be in it eating any more of your ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So when it's Israel, Ben gets really mad. And this is like a thing that we get frustrated with. And it's more than Israel. Like when the Somalians do it mm -hmm. and they start talking about Somalia. Is that Somalia? Yeah. You know, yeah. They talk about Somalia and, and then they do the, the victory speech in Somali language and Ilan Omar is like. Somali first. That yeah. frustrates me too. Mm -hmm. The Jewish people do that the worst. No. Oh. Okay. Is, I mean, <laughs> they do. Like, yeah. No. Israel's a huge. It, Israel has a huge amount of influence in American politics for some reason. And, Way yeah. outsized than anything else. And when something comes, something comes to the forefront, and it's all right. There, things are like this: Israel or America. Which side do you pick? They seem to pick Israel. I don't know. Yeah. They, or they seem to kind of flip a coin. Maybe mm. it's fifty-fifty. I don't know. I think they uh, I think they pick Israel every time. Yeah, pretty and much. Which is weird because it's like, oh, yeah, we love America. We're America first. We're patriots. We love this country. Unless something comes up that would make me pick between Israel and America, then I pick Israel. Yeah, I have like, nowhere to go. Uh, yeah. I live and die by America. I don't have a second residence. I don't have another citizenship or a different yeah. passport to get me somewhere. And to be fair to Ben Shapiro, I think the, the first tweet when it's America, that was in 2012. A while ago, so that was a different, a little different landscape. I am going to be fair to Ben Shapiro. There you go, and that's and the Rapway's on the show, so the show is being fair to Ben Shapiro. Exactly, that's why we do it. Yeah. Rapway is our fair proxy. Yeah, we use them when we need them. Everybody, calm down. You know, <laughs> <laughs> bring the tensions down. But, but keep in mind, stuff. things are heading in a direction where America first is the standard. Like, that's going to be like if you're if you're one of our guys, you need to be America first. And if you do this Israel shit or Somali shit or whatever stuff that you kind of like on the side, that you're not our guy. Yeah. Because you'll eventually let us down because something will happen where we'll need to rely on you or count on you. And then you're going to go, well, I kind of like Israel, too. Or eh, actually, open borders aren't so bad. Yeah. And then we lose it. Governor Abbott right now passing uh, anti-Israel hate speech laws, which is like an oxymoron. I don't know what hate speech really is. We already I have get all our speech already has laws. Like if you incite violence, that's already against the law. So we don't need like an additional protection. Border's kind of in a bad spot. So I don't yeah. know what Greg Abbott's up to. He's, yeah, he's busy doing the hate speech laws. Well, he's so, just showing his allegiance. That, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like a little hat tip. It's a nod. Like, okay, we got you. It's a little hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hat tip. Yeah. That fell into your lap. <laughs> That's a little hat tip. Exactly. You you said it perfectly. Yeah. All right. Migrant section. We got to go kind of quick because we have the rest of the show to get to. All right. Fine. Calm down. Uh, you Chinese showed the lizard and you did your stupid bits. <laughs> well, I need that. Yeah. To keep me sane. All right. The Chinese national caught on base. Yeah. Border Patrol agents responded to a call from the Marine Corps base about a Chinese national who entered the base without authorization, ignoring orders to leave. Subject was confirmed to be in the country illegally. His purpose and intent behind his actions are still being investigated. Want to take a guess? Yeah. Purpose and intent? You want yeah, to take I a could, guess? I could do a couple. I could vibe it out, maybe. And sounds then, like he was collecting data and intel and espionage type shit. Sounds like espionage type shit. Look at him. He looks militant, too. And my Look main, at they need a very yeah. small bar to cross out. <laughs> that was my main point. More blasted everybody today. Is the, the sensor bar they use for oh. his eyes is about this big. Oh god. And if you removed it, you could kind of just put a little black dot on each eye because that's what his eye color is. <laughs> you know? Like you have the full face. Oh, they're making it too easy for us. That's, that was really why I brought it up was right. for the eye sensors and how absurd that was. Sorry for beating you to that bit. It's all right. 
That's all right. I'll just move on to the next one. All right. Uh, we talked about this on Friday's show uh, on Bonusland, which is available, linked in the description, mm-hmm. um, that, about how uh, migrants are bringing diseases over. Yeah. We have uh, cases of what? Measles? Yeah, measles, mostly in Chicago. Uh, and, and from 2020 to 2023, we've had zero, zero, zero cases. And then 2023, we had five. And then now we have 31 yeah. and counting. And then we had this before and after from NBC News. Uh, it used to say migrants don't bring disease. In fact, they help fight it, report says, which obviously makes no sense and isn't even possible. Yeah. And we said this on the Friday show. How can you even make the argument for that? <laughs> how, how can they help? What do they do? They put on a bio suit and they go in and they start like swabbing people and helping. And they help. Yeah. They, <laughs> they start they, inoculating people for like <laughs> old world diseases that America hasn't seen in a hundred years. It's like, well, most migrants come with penicillin. Measles. They give it away. <laughs> Measles is such a 1920s ass disease. Like it's such a joke and they're just bringing it here. And yeah. uh, they somehow said, oh, they, they help fight it. And then now Chicago measles outbreak grows after more cases diagnosed in a migrant shelter. They probably got it from white people, probably. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the before and after. That's pretty funny how things change. <laughs> But before, like before the pro- whoever wrote the first one, that guy will fucking write anything. Yeah, he'll he is a hundred percent for sale. Like, or not even for sale. He'll probably just be like, "Yeah, I'll do it." He's yes man. He's Jim Carrey and yeah. yes man. He'll do it for a little hat tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're getting you're getting crazy. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. You're right. Um. All right. Uber eats Jessica. We talked about this a couple of shows ago about how the illegals are hijacking or paying to use documented legal American citizens Uber eats accounts and yeah, then spoof- delivering on their behalf, spoofing the account basically. Hey, Jessica. Jessica, okay, you're Jessica. You not Jessica. Where's Jessica? Hey, no, no speak English. You, you sorry. speak my English because you just told me that the account said Jessica. Where's Jessica? Jessica, yes. Where's she at? You not Jessica. Where's Jessica? Is Jessica my wife? No, go get your wife then. Because I'm not signing for that. I'm going to call well, Walmart. There you go. Gave us bad so That's what it's going to look like. You have yeah. a third worlder at your door. It's supposed to be a girl named Jessica, and it's some guy from Guatemala. It's me, Jessica, <laughs> from the Rob Schneider movie. <laughs> wow, that came full circle. I know. He uh, predicted it. Rob Schneider's tuned in. Yeah, he is. And then John Doyle had a good tweet that kind of sums up the migrant situation. Can you give it a read? Yeah, he said, if assimilation were possible, that any people could adapt to any society, then there's no reason that those people couldn't just build a similar one for themselves using our quite public ideas and the tens of billions of dollars we've given to them. But they don't. Yeah. So he's saying it's not like it's some big state secret how, like, San Francisco is laid out. You can go on Google Maps and be like, oh, they put the park there? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, you can steal these ideas. It's not like nuclear codes or state secrets. Like, uh, yeah, you got to treat the water at a plant uphill and then you send it down. (laughs) Like, it's all pretty obvious stuff um, that's public domain. And they haven't replicated it. They still need to flee their home countries and come to good old U.S. of A. Exactly. That's a good point. And we need these people here. Oh, they help us. And it's like, well, if they're the best people, what about their home countries? It's only going to get worse. And if their home countries get worse because all the best people are leaving, then everyone's going to come. That's a power vacuum. And that's like literally what happened. It's like, and now we're getting the less good people. I know. Now it's everybody who couldn't. Uh, pick themselves up by their bootstraps and cross the border and get in earlier. And they're like, we have to come now. There's nothing left. <laughs> there's nothing left in Guatemala. And then there's the couple uh, random cases where countries are actually improving, like uh, Argentina is tackling their debt. El Salvador locked all the criminals away and is now flourishing. So there's a couple. There's choices to make. But yeah. uh, a lot of countries aren't even actively making some of those choices. Yep. Our last clip from our migrant section the New York City mayor says illegals are sent to sanctuary cities just to make black mayors look bad. So a huge conspiracy. What happens when New York City doesn't have the money for migrants? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a great the, question. the migrants are in this city and they probably have to do what most poor people have to do, which is sometimes resort to crime. Right. How is that going to make the city safe? Right, right. And, 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 that's, and that's part of the problem. Imagine having a group of people 18 to 24 years old and being told you can't do anything all day. Mm-hmm. When you go... When you go uh, to these hercs and you're seeing these young people and I walk in and I talk with them. Some of them come from West Africa, South America, Central America. All they're saying is, man, we, we just want to work. We don't want to sit around here all day and not do anything. That is why the real focus should be on our national government that's saying, why are you doing this in New York? 
Why you check out what they're doing? They're doing it to New York, they're doing it to Chicago, they're doing it to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. they're doing it to Houston. What is the same in all those cities? All black mayors. Mm. Oh. To so make the, the blacks look bad. The black yeah. mayors, the very oppressed black mayors. I mean, I do agree with him. It is a national issue, but his end result, like, while he cracked the conspiracy, is not even close, right? Yeah, and, like, you guys made sanctuary cities. Yeah. You guys made that a thing. You declared your sanctuary city, and then you got what that results in, which is people flooding to your city for mm -hmm. sanctuary, yeah. and you're going, damn, these white folks. I'll keep paying for their hotel, too. <laughs> Fuck, these white guys really got hands with these buses. <laughs> yeah, why are these white folks doing this to us? It's yeah. like your your policy that you thought made you look good. Mm -hmm. Oh, New York's a sanctuary city. This country's built by immigrants. We're not going to stop. You thought that was such a cool policy and like you made the, the racist white folks nervous. Well, now you have a city full of third worlders and yeah. you're putting them in hotels. That's your plan on taxpayer dollars. And instead of being accountable and saying, mm, maybe this wasn't the best plan, maybe we shouldn't be a sanctuary city anymore, we need these people out of here, it's, oh, the white folks did this to us. Yeah, and then even for the sanctuary cities, we don't have the clip, but there was uh, some Denver city officials who were caught on camera saying that they were offering bus tickets to Chicago and New York because they couldn't handle the migrants. Did mm -hmm. you see that? Mm -mm. So even the sanctuary cities are starting to turn on each other now, like, <laughs> just dump them in New York. Uh, so it's getting crazy. Some of them in New York, their mayor's black. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. In Denver, we're white. <laughs> yeah. Our city officials are white. Exactly. All right. Well, that's the end of our housekeeping. We're moving on to Cringe of the Week. Our first clip of Cringe of the Week is the lady saying how the nuclear family is a scam. The nuclear family is a total fucking scam. The nuclear family is a total fucking scam. Please allow me to be moaned that we're not supposed to be doing this alone. The nuclear family is a total fucking scam. Yeah, well, maybe for you, because you're insufferable and no guy would want to take care of you and give you the nice soft life you deserve. Yeah, you're, you're an unbearable bitch and you probably are like taking issue with all these stupid things that make everybody hate you. Um, this woman, that yelling type voice where like they're... They're saying like how obvious it is and how everyone's stupid and I'm smart and it's all obvious. That yell voice mm -hmm. makes me kind of want to use a baseball bat. Yeah, me you know? too. I get that. Yeah, not in like a violent way or anything, but I just kind of want to hold a baseball like, bat. Metaphorically. Yeah, like I want to just grip it like to, to focus my hands, you know? Yeah, metaphorically. Um, but yeah, and this woman, this is like the same thing as uh, – like a, a divorced dad who got half his 401k taken. He's like, like, don't get married. You better not fucking get married. Never get married. Like the red pill. Girls just want to steal your money. Yeah, it's like clearly something happened with her where a nuclear family, you know, I don't know, screwed her over. Or it didn't work out for her. Exactly. That, and that's exactly what I think it is. It's like she had a situation where her nuclear family was messed up in some way. Very personally driven. Like Very right. personally driven. Something bad happened, bad situation. Maybe you had a bad dad or a bad mom or an absent dad or mom. And that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. And instead of taking that and saying, okay, this is what I liked from my childhood. This is what I didn't like. This is what I'm going to do with my family going forward to not repeat the bad things, but enforce the good things. And this is how we're going to solve the bad thing that happened to me. Yeah. Identify the issue, isolate it, control for it, fix it. And exactly. then we'll, it'll be better, right? But in the world where like your trauma is valid and it goes into like removing like the like, – making like trauma something you're – like that you're proud of. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, well, if I had this messed up family, no one should have a family. Families aren't even <laughs> yeah. good. Exactly. And you take it the opposite direction where instead of like correcting the problems that you had in a small way and then fixing it long term, like generationally, you just say, well, no one should have this because mine was bad. That means all families are bad. Anything based on the patriarchy is messed up. Yeah. And you have this Muppet and some people listen. I also broader rule, not even like taking what she says or actually caring or trying to analyze her history. I just don't listen to people who look like this. Yeah, that's, that's like that. So I didn't even have to watch this whole thing. I could just not listen to people who look like this. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, let's move on it uh, to our next clip. There was a Vanderbilt situation. Yeah, you want me to explain it? The yeah, Vanderbilt, yeah, yeah. a bunch of Vanderbilt Muppet students went to, I think, the president's office to uh, do a sit-in, basically, a long-ass sit-in for Palestine. What else? They're doing the BLM-type tactics for Palestine and the Israel 
end the genocide, blah, 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 whatever they say, right? Yeah, we'll play this clip right here. This is from the protest. The girls uh, at the protest called 911 because they were told if they leave the protest, they can't come back in. Yeah. And one of the girls doesn't want to do that, so she wants to stay for the protest, but she's on her period, and she doesn't want to leave her tampon in, so they called 911. Toxic uh, shock. Yeah, there is a, currently a female student who is being denied the right to change her tampon uh, that has been in for multiple hours, which leads to an increased risk of toxic so shock syndrome. So while you're saying... I'm a female, I understand. Right, so the then you should understand... Okay, what you are not hearing, what you are not hearing is that if she stands up to use the restroom to change her tampon, they are threatening arrest. So it is not an option for her. You have an emergency. Yes, ma'am, I do. That is an emergency. Uh, no, do you have an emergency? Not your friend that's inside. Do you have an emergency? That is I, my emergency. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't. That's an I don't remember the time that I needed to have an emergency personally to call nine one one for help. I'm sorry, what? I don't remember a time when it has to be a personal emergency for me to call nine one one for help. I am requesting assistance, medical urgent okay, assistance. What I'm telling you. Okay, so you're telling me your friend in Kirkland needs an ambulance. She needs... Is that what you're telling me? Like a serious situation. <laughs> needs an ambulance. Like the operator kind of gets what's going on and she just cuts through the shit and goes, do you want me to come pick you up and take you to the hospital? <laughs> Sounds like you guys are LARPing in some sort of way and she can't access a tampon. It's like, yeah. so, she, so is she being held against her will? You called 911 because of a tampon. And then this is Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. This is a school that used to be smart people. Yeah, of course. They call it, like it the, still Ivy, is. the Ivy League of the South. Yeah. That's what they call it. And this is also like the future leaders of America who think they know best and want to like change the direction of the country mm -hmm. and have done a uh, have done exactly that. But these are the people who think they know best and think that like, oh, America as it was was a problem. It needs to be different. So these are the people that think like it's good to kill unborn babies and the babies that do survive, you can make them trans. We need an open border. We need to let the criminals out. We need police reform and defund the police. And like this is who we're dealing with. Like this is whose ideas that is. Yeah. And then these are the people that are like demanding power in our society. And then they call the cops for 911 for a tampon. Pathetic. And it's like this meme, like the stop oppressing me. The, your boot is on my head. And then ah, I was doing it myself the whole time. And then a lot of times people who are normal or even right leaning, they don't like stand up to people like this in their lives because they don't want to ruffle any feathers or I don't want to cause a scene at work or I don't want to get a bad grade on my test. So you let these people like take power from you. Yeah. And, and this also these types, this used to be a phase yeah. Where, you know, oh, I was really passionate in college. I found a few. There's always an issue you can find to do a sit in for for your college, mm -hmm. you know. But now this kind of BLMification of everything, like the same people who did the BLM stuff are now moved on and they're doing this. And it's actually doing more damage for the cause. It's just like, OK, they're whiners. The whiners are at it again. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas someone like Candace Owens, who's kind of like taking the contrarian position, which I don't even I don't care what's happening in between Israel and Gaza and all that. I don't care. I don't Candace care. Owens was commenting on it, got her fired, you know, was calling it uh, a genocide or called it, you know, uh, disproportionate use of force probably. is. I, I don't watch a lot of what she said, but someone like that is more effective than the whiny BLM kids, right, mm -hmm. who, are, who need the tampon and call 911. Uh, God bless that uh, operator who's like, okay, I, I'm sorting through this. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm picking up the vibe. This is some sort of manic situation where the cops are around and you're kind of doing yeah, something wrong. 22-year-old, 10-year-old, 22-year-old, 10-year-old on the Do, phone. Does an ambulance help you right now? And, yeah. uh, you know, cutting through the bullshit. But, yeah, this the, it's just doing more damage than good. And then the branding is you're not like a heart – you're not like a uh, very caring person. You're just kind of like a whiner. You know, it's turning into something it was else. like tattling and like, oh, I'm going to call the police on you and you're going to get in trouble and like calling an ambulance while the police are there. You know, it doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. And these types, like we said, they're the ones that see power in our culture. Look at this tweet I found from uh, Gene Parmesan, which is a meme account. Gene Parmesan is yeah. the uh, what's arrested the guy? development, right? arrested development guy, the PI from arrested development. But yep. yeah, give that a read, please. Therapy is evil because it is an attempt to recreate the Catholic confession. But instead of talking to a priest, you talk to a white woman who voted for Joe Biden. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Well, we're done with that section, but we're still in cringe. We're moving on. Are you ready for the trans part of cringe? 
I am, yeah. All right, let's go to our- You don't have to ask me. I know it's coming. (laughs) I know the trans part of cringe is coming every time. Well, there was a soccer player who posted something about a person who suffered with seizures. Yeah. And how they were had their lives saved by um, believing in Jesus and coming to Jesus. Yep. Uh, and then Megan Rapinoe bullied her and made her take it down and apologize. Yeah, the soccer player was Corbin Albert, and the video we're not even going to play it. But the kid basically said play he used in to the have, background here. Yeah. It's like it's like a testimonial. He used to have seizures. He thought he was trans. Blah blah blah. And then this girl said like, "Oh, you know, the power of God, love heals, all that type of stuff." And then Megan Rapino said. For the people who want to hide behind my beliefs, I would just ask one question. Are you making any type of space safer, more inclusive, more whole, any semblance of better, bringing the best out of anyone? Because if you aren't, all you believe in is hate, and kids are literally killing themselves because of this hate. Wake the fuck up. Yeah. And then this girl ended up saying, I just wanted to sincerely apologize for all my actions on social media, liking and sharing posts that are offensive, blah, blah, blah. She did the whole high road, like, I don't really want this fight. But she said that the post was in, insensitive and immature and all this and hurtful Yeah, when it was just like a pro-God post. Yeah, uh, and a clearly messed up kid who kind of made it out of a messed up spiral and, and was living- found a- God and is not weird and trans anymore, which is like the best story you should highlight. Instead, it's, well, don't say that because then the other weird kids might not be- continuing down the weird path. Yeah. And then Megan Rapino is another one of those people where I just don't take advice from people who look like that. Yeah. That's so another good one. Add her to that list. <laughs> and then Megan Rapino, like she's policing this, you know, it, it, no one can have a different opinion from the most extreme leftist women's soccer player. Right. Yeah. Aren't you like 38 and aged out and like done just to hang it up, hang up the cleats, Megan. We don't need you policing what trans kids are up to. Yeah. We don't listen to soccer lesbians either. Exactly. So, and then it's like Megan Rapino says, we need is what you're doing creating a safer place. And it's like, what do you need a safe place for? So you can do stuff like this. Yeah. HIV breastfeed baby guy. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. I was wondering what that asset was going to come in. Yeah. yeah. Canadian, Canadian HIV positive biological man breastfeeds baby with a, with medical support. There you go, Megan. We included him now. We yeah. included the HIV positive man breastfeeding an infant. Because we needed the space to be safe for people to be themselves. And that's what some people want to do. And that's what you need to do to, to be a good person. And if you're a- allow the worst people in society to do the worst things to the most innocent because it's a safe space for anyone to do whatever they want. And if you're against it, I'm afraid you just have hate in your heart. Yeah. Let the HIV man feed the baby. Yep. And that is... That's on that's on you. Mm-hmm. The HIV man breastfeeding the baby is a result of Megan Rapinoe's policies. Yeah. And that's what she's comfortable with, and that's what she wants everyone else to do, too. Of course. That's a safe and inclusive space. Well, not quite safe with the HIV-positive hormonal, yeah. <laughs> hormonal-filled milk secretions. Yeah, exactly. Well, our last piece of cringe, before we get into urban decay, uh, some of the trans stuff uh, supersedes goes beyond Mm -hmm. human to human. Yeah. And there's an engagement with animals in a way that kind of is very telling. Can you, can you read the trans animal dog story? Yeah. The Reddit title is dog growling at my trans friend. Ever since my friend started her transition and going on HRT, my family's dog has started growling and barking at her every time she is at my place. This has never happened before she started her transition. The behavior is just so sudden and unexplained. Is there anything I can do? Uh, when I say this is unusual, our dog has never barked like this, not even at UPS or Amazon drivers. It's just hard to explain why he was only aggressive towards my friend. From my experience with dogs, this is like a comment and reply. From my experience with dogs, I have a couple questions that could p- potentially have something to do with it. Did they change part of their appearance drastically already? Like, could they have had a big beard before or anything? Because your dog might be smelling that uh, it's them, but seeing something that doesn't add up to dog brain. Like, if you went from really long hair to shaved head, just a potential thought. Um And then somebody else said, I believe dogs recognize scent, obviously. And then somebody else, some other trans person said, could be a scented product. Some are unbearable for my autistic brain. Can't imagine how it is for dogs and other sensitive animals. Mm. So autistic trans people giving you advice on the, my dog doesn't like my trans friend thread. Great. The blind lead the blind, right? Yeah. I thought dogs just kind of vibed it out. That's what I was going to say. I think we've been relying on dogs for thousands of years. You know, we got livestock guardian dogs, compound dogs, like a Rottweiler protects the the grounds of your house. And they're kind of like, they hear stuff before you. 
and they mm-hmm. point and they alert. And then the pointer dogs goes like goes like this, and there's a duck. He sees a bird, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the other one right and there. goes and gets it after the gunshot. Yeah. And then this dog just doesn't have it right. <laughs> yeah, this dog, for some reason, like, they're man's best friend in every other context, but this dog is wrong here. Yeah, he's, he's messed up. Yeah. They, their instincts are great for everything else except when it comes to being chill to trans people. Yeah, the dog's something ain't right meter. Mm. For some reason, now it's wrong with yeah. the trans person who it knew before was a guy and now it's a girl. So Exactly. All right, well, don't get too down or too depressed. Moving on to Urban Decay. It's going to get a little worse. I'm going with the dog. I'm siding with the dog. All right, our first clip of Urban Decay. Uh, this section is our girls getting punched section. Yeah, white girl knockout game. White girl knockout game, basically. In New York City, there's this new trend where street rats and homeless people and and uh, drug addicts are just punching innocent girls. Uh, look at this compilation. I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. Last week I was assaulted in New York City, as you can kind of see here with my black eye. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. He goes, sorry, and then punches me in the head. So I just got punched in the face walking home. I was literally like, oh, so, yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. And it was just some black guy. You know, every time. So, yeah, a New York Post called it a political fringe candidate or something. And it was like Skoborski or something. I forgot his name. But uh, we we meant to cover this last Friday and it's not exactly up to date, but we have to cover this for like the consistency of the show, you know, so white girl knockout game happened. Yeah. And there was a tweet about it that kind of went hand in hand. So many videos going around of girls in NYC getting punched in the head and it's terrible and scary. But at what point are we perpetuating right wing reactionary crime panic instead of keeping ourselves safe? It, it is right. It's making it's right wing's fault. Can't give the right wing a dub because there's some black guy trying to knock out white women. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what some people are up to their ideology. It's like I, I called it oppositional defiant disorder. You know, mm. where they're just no matter what, like if the right wing is in on something, I'm going to have to take the op. I'm, it's debate club instead of like your life and uh, rules to live by. Right. Yeah. It's debate club where you just have to take the opposite of whatever the right wing says, even though white girls are getting swung on. Right. And exactly. So the worst part of innocent women being attacked is the right wing can use these videos as evidence that the left wing's policies don't work. Yeah. And then and that's the worst part of it. Exactly. Not the people getting literally beat up. Uh huh. And then even still, some of the white girls still have this like woke mentality. This was an update from one of the girls in the main Mm -hmm. puncher video that I want to show. There were two reasons why I didn't share the location or the description of this man. One was that I don't remember what he looked like. It happened so quick. And two, I just didn't think everyone should be focusing on one person, but just so everyone has a better awareness of their surroundings in general. The cops did end up finding this man. She didn't want people to focus on the the puncher. The one person who's punching people? The one mystery guy who's capable of swinging on petite white girls. Like, hey, if you're in if you're in uh, downtown financial district of New York City, there's yeah. a man. Between he's... 34th and 22nd Street is yeah. where he hangs out. <laughs> he's a she... six foot two, black, skinny. She just wants people to be broadly safer. And then that was a thing. None of these girls said the guy's race. Nobody wanted to help. Every Every girl is a chain in the like, Someone else is going to get punched before it gets solved yeah. by not naming or giving a description or trying to warn people exactly what is going on. And it was the same guy. It's four for four. This guy just he, he, he hit a four piece. He and, hit for yeah. the cycle on these white girls. And he doesn't get in trouble. And those are the same girls that probably want to protest and call about the tampon. I don't know. You know, some of them are, some of them aren't. But uh, when it comes to political discussions like this, they all get labeled because obviously, as we've shown on the show before, Women are trending socialist in all Western countries. They're mm-hmm. trending left, right? And look at this clip. Uh, this woman was attacked by a repeat offender. Uh, look, what, look what happened here. This is a different New York puncher. Different puncher. It is a random, unprovoked, vicious attack on a 57-year-old woman in Brooklyn. Watch as the suspect ignores another man walking nearby, then punches the woman in her face, causing her to stumble backwards. What happened? Why are you hitting me? Why are you hitting me? I was bleeding a lot. Well, I'm so scared, so afraid. Dulce Petrarda was on the receiving end of that punch. Her mouth now wired shut, her face fractured in several places. Drinking food out of a straw for six weeks, permanent damage to her lower lip. 
three teeth knocked out, and she might need surgery. The suspect was charged with misdemeanor assault, meaning he's not bail eligible. He'll be released back onto the street. And that's the part that has the victim and her family frustrated and afraid. Mm. So he punched her in the face. Random. Just some 56-year-old woman. Knocked her teeth out, fractured her jaw, wired mouth shut, can't eat, has to drink out of a straw for six weeks, and he gets let right back out. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the things that... Obviously, we always talk about bail uh, reform and how bad it is and how now we talked about the dismembered Long Island bodies and how technically, since no one was charged with murder, they couldn't hold them on bail. Um, But another thing with crimes like these, I want to talk about the right wing vision for running a city, which would have enhancements, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've talked about that with George Gascon and how he doesn't do gang enhancements for criminals anymore. And the criminals are like on the phone calling their mom, like I'll be out next week. George Gascon. Gascon, he's the best. (laughs) Um, And so what Gascon doesn't do is enhancements, right? And I think there should be enhancements on a crime for a ton of different little things. Like the woman's 56 years old, enhancement, you know, she's a weak woman that's enhanced, you know, compared to a man, right? It wasn't like a fight that happened. It was a random attack. Enhancement. Enhancement. Yeah. Uh, You're with the boys doing it. You rob someone with three people. Boom. Enhancement. Because you're a known troublemaker if you have a crew of three guys that you're willing to commit a felony with. She had injuries that are blah, 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 wired shut, horrible things. Enhancement. Yeah. So I have a dream of this world where there's a ton of enhancements for all these little micro things. And then- the only time you don't get an enhancement is like if you attacked an able-bodied man who was there to fight back and like saw you coming. And said, let's do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mutual combat now. That's the only time there's no enhancement. That's what I'm, yeah. But yeah, so, uh, and th- there actually are enhancements in a lot of jurisdictions for someone over the age of 60. Mm-hmm. Like they do elder, they do violations for uh, the elderly. But this woman just misses it and she's got her jaw wired shut like Kanye drinking out of a straw. And this guy, they go, go ahead. Hope you don't do it again. That's basically what the state of New York is saying. Hope you don't do it again, right? Yeah, you just attacked an innocent lady, blindsided her. You hopefully you won't do it again. Yeah, it's like like the first time was the proof that he would he'll do it. Yeah, and uh, but fortunately for us, there are some cities that are kind of like working hard on this to try and solve it. Yeah, they're trying to solve it. Chicago is that the Bart? Or no, that's San Francisco. San Francisco's the bar. San Francisco's trying to solve it with their new system where they give out uh, cards for people who are being harassed. Check this out. Hello, we're two college students who are BART riders. And safety is really important to us. So we're going to go ask for the bar- bystander intervention cards. Hello, excuse me. Will we be able to have some bystander intervention cards, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Hang on. Thank you so much. Thank you so okay. much. So this card over here is for when you're being harassed. It says, you got me. So you'd hand it to somebody else and it gives them instructions on how they can help you. If you see someone being harassed, you can also give them this I got you card, which gives them instructions on the back to find the BART police or call someone or more instructions on how to be safe. So a card, a little business card when the street rat knockout game player is uh, getting ready to crow hop into your jaw. You hand you hand someone else a card. Some dorky white guy like, hey, can you fucking step up, please? Like some yeah. tech guy, rock climber. You get knocked out and they put a card on, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, they knock you out and then they throw the card on your lifeless body, right? So it's like for, for this, it's kind of like if you're a kid and you need help, you get an adult. Yeah. So it's like you give the card and it's like, oh, please, I need an adult. And then if the adult assesses the situation and goes, all right, we need police, let's call the police, those people would say, no, 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 don't call the police. That's racist. The whole point is not to use police or need police. Mm-hmm. So you just use the card and all it gets you is, I don't know, feeling good until you actually have to use it. Yeah, until the punch connects. Yeah. Right? So like the idea feels good of like, oh, I got you. Oh, yeah, you got me. Yeah. And you go back and forth with the card, and it feels good idea-wise, but when you need to use it, you're going to need the cops. And yeah. then that's what they're trying to avoid with the card. How about you just call 911 if someone's harassed people on the subway? Um, and then there was a tweet that kind of went with it. Yeah, this was from uh, Pagliacci the Hated, who I think runs uh, Redux or is involved with that or something. Nice. She's a girl who really hates trans guys, <laughs> so I like her. 
Um, and she said, my hands struggle to find the bystander intervention card buried deep in the confines of my purse while my head is repeatedly bludgeoned by a neurodivergent radical racialized person of housing instability as hundreds of people watch in curiosity, unsure if I require assistance. <laughs> so uh, does she have a card? I don't know. Is she reaching for a card? It's like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so, uh, nobody will act until they see the card, I guess. And then my favorite is in this video, the woman handing out the cards is in like a bulletproof glass box with like a little slot. So like, they're good. They're okay. Yeah. All you animals actually on the train, you have to fend for yourself and use the Indian and Asian girl. Yeah. Use the card system. And here's a situation in New York where maybe they could use the cards. Stop it. They're just passing a card back and forth to each other the whole time. Everyone's passing like, cards. Here, you take this. You got me. I got you. All right, I got you. You got okay. me. Oh, shit. It just keeps getting passed around the whole subway car. All the while, you just have to trust that his flinches at you don't turn into an actual connection. And that's what they would do. Like, you know, if some liberal from Col- Columbia mm-hmm. would go, well, technically he didn't hit anybody. I know, like smug. Was anyone hurt from did, that? Did anybody have any lasting damage or jaw surgery needed? I don't think so. Let yeah. him be. And another thing I was thinking about, you know how Kathy Hochul got uh, booed out of the slain officer's funeral recently? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, she can pardon Daniel Penny. She could pardon him. You know, mm-hmm. that subway hero accidentally killed a Michael Jackson impersonator who had like 50 Reddit posts about how much of a menace he was and how he terrorized people, but they didn't have a Bart card. So Daniel Penny had to choke him out. Yeah. Um, but she could pardon him, but she doesn't. Cause you know why New, New York loves the wasteland. They like, yeah. they like when illegals are in the hotels and white people are scared to intervene on the subway. Exactly. Well, St. Louis has a plan. Uh, they have a plan for the crime that everyone's seeing. Look what the mayor of St. Louis said will not be the last engagement, but that we will continue to lean in. Mayors and leaders from Jackson, Mississippi, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Durham, St. Louis, and more meeting Wednesday and Thursday to talk crime and solution. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones says she's taking back strategies used in Atlanta for nightclub owners and eyeing ways to reduce crimes around convenience stores. We have a lot of violence around convenience stores and gas stations, so how can we hold those uh, business owners accountable uh, and also bring down crime? And then uh, some of the things that we're already doing, we're finding that other mayors are doing as well. Discussions with the council on criminal... So you have a big crime problem, and instead of arresting the criminals and keeping them in jail, especially if they're repeat offenders, which a lot of them are, you're going to get mad at the people where they're doing the crime. Yeah. That's you think the convenience store like watches the guy pull out a gun and shoot someone and goes, yeah, that's why I opened the <laughs> get store. Him, get this guy. Yeah, kill him too. <laughs> that's why I opened the 7-Eleven. But I think it might sound crazy. I think they, they see businesses as white. That's fair, even though they're probably run by some sort of minority or yep. Indonesian. But like or owning Indian. a business is a white thing. Yeah. So we have to hold the business owners accountable when it's mostly in these situations in St. Louis and San Francisco or whatever. These are all the crim- black these are all the black mayors Joe Biden's trying to make look bad with illegal immigrants yeah. too. But but if you own a business, it's like that's who we, we're looking to attack business owners. So we've gone over this, too, with the Kias and the Hyundais, how the city's mayors are suing them because the cars are too easy to steal. Now we're moving towards holding business owners responsible because criminals come and do crime on their or near their property. Yeah. And it's just every, everybody wants to do everything except lock up violent black criminals who are doing the crime. And, you know, that's a guess. They're, they're mostly black. You've seen the city statistics. The, the St. Louis, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, Couple other cities in there, you know, you know who's doing the convenience stores thuggery, Memphis. right? Memphis. It's not. It's not Albert, the white guy. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on to Joy Reid DEI section. Our last piece of urban decay. Um, we've been talking about DEI, and people say DEI is the N word. And uh, Joy Reid said it the other day too. Y'all think we don't know what you mean when you say DEI? We know what you mean. We know what you mean. All right, <laughs> fine. You caught me. You caught me. That I is say what it. I think. <laughs> yeah, we see a bunch of DEIs in Urban Decay every week. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Jerry looks like shit, too. She shouldn't be making videos like this with a bonnet on mm-hmm. late at night. 
And obviously, Joy Reid's a big defender of DEI because she went to Harvard. I know. And to get to, into Harvard, you need to have perfect SATs or within a couple hundred points of perfect SATs. Yeah. Right? High GPA, almost perfect there. Pretty much. So Joy Reid should have close – back when she took the test, was at a 1,600. Mm -hmm. She should be – 1550 to 1600 to get into Harvard. 1550 with great extracurriculars. Like 1550, and you're barely getting in with perfect everything else. Mm -hmm. So Joy Reid's SATs, because DEI is not bad and it's not putting unqualified people into the places uh, that are deserved to be held by qualified people. Mm -hmm. She must have 1550 or better SATs. Yeah. Release the SAT scores, Joy. I'd like to see it. <laughs> and you know, like she's been DEI probably her whole life, getting into Harvard, the CNN. I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't really see the talent dripping off the screen for Joy Reid. Yeah. Um, so the people who it specifically benefited are the ones who will loudly defend it and then kind of make it like we're calling them the N-word or something. Yeah. DEI means the N-word. And it's like, well, technically, Joy, it would mean N-word with a job. That's true. So technically, Joy, it's it's a it's a specific type. Yeah. So you're not actually you're not actually even right. So yeah, that's a good point, Richard. You see all those DEIs in the last clips punching the white girls. I know that's crazy. Those DEIs are just. But punching. those wouldn't be DEIs because those guys don't have a job. That's true. They're just criminals. I just so thought it was just, interchangeable for the N-word. Yeah, that's according to Joy, <laughs> it is, right? Well, let's go see what the DEIs are up to in this next clip where they are uh, twerking with Toy Story characters. Yeah, let's, let's see what the, let's the, see what the DEI street child play. entertainment is. <laughs> yeah, they're going, oh, wow. Copyright music, so I'll probably turn it down. But yeah, there. one of them's getting twerked on. The other is twerking. And it's at a it, kid's party. And it's at all the, like, the baby's party. It's not even, I wouldn't even call this kids. It's like toddler, diaper. Yeah. Oh, good lessons to learn early in the city of New Orleans. Yeah, the DEI is out in the front. Yeah. Um, Real pig shit. Real disgusting pig shit. And then let's go to the meme I found about how, um, yeah, this one. So you know how black people always say white people are so fragile, white people, uh, white privilege, you white guys fragility. are so fragile, you guys are white fragility. And, you know, white people are so fragile, white person says, and you burn the whole city down. And now it's becoming just DEI. Yeah. <laughs> now it's becoming DEI. That's the new branding. So they don't want you to, they want to brand uh, legitimate criticism as like the equivalent of the worst word there is so that you can't say it anymore. You can't call Joy Reid a DEI uh Harvard admission, you know? You can't jo call Joy Reid a DEI CNN anchor. And then all of society's standards go away. Yep. Because no one's allowed to criticize the people who are lowering the standards in society. Yes, sir. Um, and then let's show, uh, there's also the, speaking of DEI, it, it's not DEI, but I like to call it DEI. Okay. Um, they're labeling black and Hispanic criminals as white. Yeah. That's kind of DEI. Yeah. Well, like, I, you, you, you're trying to improve the stats for more inclusion of. Yeah. And here, I mean, here it is. And this guy, unbiased crime report always posts these and he, he does the active links. Like, so he's like, I'm not making this up community notes. Please check me. Here's this darkest black guy ever white. Here's another darkest black guy ever. He's listed as white. So one of the things I'm thinking is like, maybe default is white. And Let's go ahead and change that in the computer system, right? Because yeah. if anything default, who should default be? <laughs> That's a good point. I don't know. So Tyrone Lashawn Bougier, yeah. <laughs> yeah. white, white. I don't <laughs> think so. I'm, I'm, I don't think so. Well, Lashawn could be French. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Lashawn, <laughs> Lashawn. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, but yeah. So I'm, I'm petitioning to make the default setting not white. Yeah. And then that'll solve a lot of problems. All right, right? let's end our Urban Decay with our last clip. Uh, Big Tony Reed, he does the thing where he goes to the white neighborhoods. He goes, I'm out here with the right folks. Yeah. And uh, no one doing this. He went to the black neighborhood. And look what he said. Look, I'm down here with the niggas. Niggas double parked in the no parking zone. Niggas out there smoking black and mild. The other boy out here taxi hacking. You got to love these niggas. It's beautiful. <laughs> Double park in the no park zone. So, you know, we uh, we outsourced one of our opinions to a, a, a person of color. Big Reed. Big Reed, who we like. He's well, a funny guy, dude. It is. It is a funny page he has on Instagram. 
All right, well, that's the end of Urban Decay. Don't get too down or too depressed. We're moving on to Uplifting Gold, and we have some really uplifting stuff. And we actually had to skip a few videos in Urban Decay to make room for Fleckus's comments rant and the chameleon lesson against the Praying Mantis. So those will be in bonus land, and we'll see you there. And if you're upset about that, won't you leave a sad <laughs> comment? Won't you say, Fleckus, you can't keep doing this to me. Why am I in your head so much? You guys are like me so much. You guys are just obsessed with me. I take it as a compliment. All right. Yeah, me too. And we love you. We love you. We're not even mad. I'm just doing doing a bit. And uh, you're probably joking too. (laughs) But you're don't act like a pussy. Don't act like a pussy because your favorite show isn't on for one day and it comes back in three days. And I can't wait. All right, you're doing it again. All right. Don't get sidetracked. I'm about to get down and depressed. All right, first clip. Teacher with the Indian accent. This is, what, a college professor or something? I think so, yeah. You're struggling at uni, and to make it worse, your teacher sounds like this. ...ability that a sample contains no more than one unmarketable tomato. No more than one unmarketable tomato. What? <laughs> I don't go to classes like that. That's a lot of math, high-end math shit. Uh PhD courses that have a, yeah. bit, a brutal accent. Yeah, Can't understand anything. I had a, growing up, I had a priest, Father Aaron. Yeah. And he was like, what that. ethnicity? He was Indian. Okay. And he'd go, oh, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and it was just like, you couldn't understand anything. And you go to mass and it'd just be like, oh, no, 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 no. And we'd just go on for an hour. And it was like an Italian town. That's really funny. So was he a visiting guy or like what? I he... think he was like a visiting guy who did a rotation, but he was there for like five years when I was in my formative. In your prime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my formative... I guess this is church. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is God. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is the is guy religion. who talks to God on our behalf or whatever. Yeah. Um, let's go to the guy who drove seven hours for a haircut. This is uplifting because we all like fresh haircuts and finding that barber. So how far did you drive to get this haircut? Seven hours. Seven hours? Where'd you come from? New Hampshire. All right. We're going to get you right. Yeah. Fucked his <laughs> shit up. <laughs> Fucked him hours. right up. Seven hours. Absolutely. Send him home. With the weird black guy Odo Beckham Jr. haircut. And you live in New Hampshire. Yeah, go, get back to the free state of New Hampshire in the woods. Where people are going to like that. Yeah, not at all. Oh, my God. And then this other guy got an iguana haircut, which actually... Pretty fire. That's actually lit. Yeah. That's skill. This other one is just like you did a black guy haircut on the white guy, and yeah. it looks so stupid. That your lines are so sharp. Yeah. The iguana, that's a white kid haircut. And it actually looks like there's a lizard on your head holding on. Yeah. Which is like, <laughs> you know, that's what people go for. All right. Uh, let's play this one. The old school pizza. This that one's is. my f- true favorite uplifting gold. Papa, this is old school Brooklyn. You better enjoy it. Look how good it is. You're here with your cousin, your, 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 your friend. And look at this. You're having good pizza after football practice. Man, I wish I could live in those shoes again. I tell you, it's the best thing ever, guys. Going back to old school on 86th Street and 5th Avenue. Ain't that right, buddy? Yeah! God bless you, and God bless America. Yeah! <laughs> that's Pepino uplifting. Joe, I gotta follow this guy. Yeah, that's uplifting. Yeah, that's, that's good That's Americana. Shit. Kids, Pizza. after sports, come on. But then there's gonna be some guy who tries to punch you. There's a migrant who wants <laughs> to take your bag. But, you know, for right now, that's Americana. Yeah, some migrant gets a hotel every night, but... I would want to give money to those kids. Me too. <laughs> and they're a football team or whatever they need help with. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the guy who lost money in an Uber and had it returned to him. I was on the way to the studio, bro. I lost four thousand dollars in this lady car, yeah, man. Yeah, you see, Marty hey, Sunday. And she had Jesus she had a decency Christ. enough to bring it to me, so yes. You know, hold this for me real quick. You know, we live by the ten percent rule, so. Okay, now my friend, I oh, cry. Man. No, I cry, no, my you friend. Good. Shit, take the weekend off. No. All right, take he, the weekend off. He gives her this money. And he gives her four hundred bucks. That's nice. Yeah, and that's good people right there. Yeah, that's a good guy. You know. There's nothing bad about that. That's uplifting. That's this very is uplifting. the positive part of the show. Mm-hmm. Our last clip we're going to end with with the nice baby race behind us from a baseball game. And then, and then here they go. The parents have to run. Babies don't fully understand. None of the babies go at first. There's probably bad fertilizer on that grass. That the baby shouldn't be touching. Don't ruin uplifting gold so far. (laughs) 
All right. And then the baby's race. We get it. And the baby's race. The baby's race. You get One it. One of them wins. One of them stood up. Well, <laughs> that is the end of the episode. Another Fleckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe. All the good stuff. Fleckustalks.com for bonus land. We have a 30-minute bonus land dropping right now simultaneously. You're going to love it. Don't be the haters. Don't be those people that were mean to us in the comments. Be the people that are supportive and positive to us. And there's no way to prove your positive support than by joining Bonus Land. Make those haters eat crow by you joining Bonus Land. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on Friday. God bless you and God bless America. Yeah.